Ten minutes later. So I would recommend you do the ten thousand for forty seven forty eight. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Greetings and salutations, David Dufort here. I am sitting in the uh, passenger seat of a uh, killer salesperson. Just got done. Just got done seeing him close the deal. Uh, on our very first door knock, I'm here with Mr. John Campbell. How you doing, John? Wonderful. How are you? <laughs> Trying to keep my stuff on the dash. <laughs> John, you want to hand that to me so we don't uh, kill yeah. ourselves here? <laughs> yeah, you can hold that. So I'm doing these in the field events uh, to try to spice up our content to kind of show you actually how this business is done. Uh, we just actually filmed the majority of a full real life presentation that you may see prior or after this. And what I want to do here today, John, is kind of kind of do some post game analysis of. Uh, Tell us kind of what happened, set us up. Imagine this is somebody brand new. Mm -hmm. Take us through what happened. Well, I think we need a whiteboard so we can do the John Madden. So yeah. So we can do the X flip and came around and swap and slap. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it took us a few attempts to find the house. We went to a few different houses, couldn't find the address, and it ended up being cleverly indicated on the mailbox. <laughs> um, so we found the house. Lady was not at the house. Uh, roommate directed us to where she was, went down there, couldn't find her. The guy on the tractor then called her to come out of the house. She came out, um, introduced, uh, mentioned why I was there. Uh, she said she didn't have time. She wanted to do another day. She said she was too busy. She was working, da, 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 da. Um, which we could not do, unfortunately, because we did drive three hours to see her. Um, well, there's a tricky thing with that because I actually drove three hours out to come and see because I sent. And we respect her time as much as she respects ours. Right. So after a few minute conversation, uh, she agreed to sit down and have a conversation with us and um, told her we would just spend with the idle chit chat and just kind of get down to brass tacks and get her done so she could get back to work. So the good news is it doesn't take real long and it's not real complicated. I can just spend with all the nice disease and BS and just get right down to brass tacks. Okay. Uh, nice lady, uh, had to, was involved in five funerals over the past three years. You can tell that was a little bit hard on her. Her, her tone changed when she started talking about that. So of course my tone changed at the same time. Right. Uh, went from energetic and quick to very somber and compassionate. Um, talked about that. Everyone that did pass away did have insurance, so she understands the value and uh, what a help that was for her and the rest of the family. I'm um, pretty healthy. Um, going in to get uh, some procedure or something looked at in the next week or two, so it was important we got coverage in place before right. that yeah. happened. Um, there uh, was uh, urgency. Interactor, yeah, I mean, that, you know, if you guys go watch that video, if, if it's here or there or wherever, there's a point in the video where right in the beginning, she's like, I'm busy. I'm in the middle of work. She had her dish, dish cloth or whatever with mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And she, she looked dismissive and John beautifully turned it around. Uh, mentioning the three hour drive mm -hmm. when she mentioned she had something she went to the hospital about. Mm -hmm. John was like, well, that's exactly the reason you need to meet with us. I mean, it was, it was textbook. Perfect. And Man, it was just, it was just incredible. It was, it was amazing. Shucks. That's 20 bucks I owe you. Yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> checks in the mail. <laughs> okay, checks in the mail, buddy. So, but we sat down, had the conversation, addressed what she wanted. Uh, she's looking for a cremation, no viewing, uh, memorial service um, at the funeral home. She was just involved one not long ago. I estimated between five and 7,000. She said she just paid six. So validated that I actually had a clue as to what I was talking about. Right. Um, playing for inflation, we were looking at 10. Uh, first, she said she wanted 20,000. Price was a little steep on that. Um, so we looked at options of 10, 12, 5, and 15. She wanted to do 12, 5. She said, I think I can afford that. Um, when I questioned the affordability of that payment, it wasn't solid. So I backed it yeah. down to 10 to make sure it stuck. Um, so we did that. And then let her know that later on down the road, we can always increase it if we feel the need to. Do you feel that sold her like solid after you said that we'll come as, back as, later? And as soon as I recommended the cheap plan and then we can add later, she was a hundred percent done. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause two reasons. One, it made her breathe easier cause it was going to be easier on her budget. And two, I offered to take less money 
I yeah. recommended right. less money. And if you want to be a salesperson, recommend the highest plan. You'll lose every time. Yep. Yep. So I recommended to go to Safe Route because I'd rather have a forty-seven dollar policy that sticks than a fifty-eight that cancels in ninety days. Yeah. And she was hesitant. She was like, "Ah, you can sense there is some anxiety." It wasn't there. solid, right? So that's why I backed it down to ten. And when I said, "Is that affordable?" It was. You could tell that was fine. I mean, it was only ten dollars or no thirteen dollars a month is what it ended up being, right? Um, but still, thirteen bucks is thirteen bucks. And psychologically, yeah. for her, that made a big difference. So. That's what we did. Awesome. Um, the sun was bright as can be. I could not see my computer, <laughs> so I had to squat down, sit in front of the truck. I eventually had to open the hood of the truck and uh, do the application um, on top of my radiator. Right. <laughs> but do it wherever you can. We got her done. She gave me a heart attack. She told me that her uh, SSI went on her direct. Ah, uh, yeah, mode. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're right with Moo, and of course that don't work. But <laughs> she did mention she does have a checking account. And she takes the money off her card, puts it in checking. So we were still okay with that. I got saved there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was all good. Super nice lady. Um, client number one, one for one in the books today. All right. We're going to keep rocking Plenty more to go. until it's time for Cinderella to get back in his carriage <laughs> to head back home. Does that look like a wig? Hanging off of that wig. That's the best mop head. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're right. Wig or mop head. Maybe it's a Halloween costume for Cousin Ed. We're going to see Patricia. <laughs> Patricia. Hello. Hey. Oh, how y'all doing? Hey. Oh, my dear Lord in heaven. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Ooh, mama. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that I can breathe, I'm looking for Patricia. This is me. Is it you? You sure? Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm John with the Addis. Well, that doesn't say nothing. With the what? With the Addis and Brooklyn Group. I'm getting back to you about the request you sent me for the final expense coverage, and everything makes sense now because you told me your favorite hobby was cooking. <laughs> I get in here, and there's a rack of ribs <laughs> laying right there on the right. railing. Okay. The only thing I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Cause I got here about five hours too early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I called already. Done got some. ten minutes later. I'm gonna be on you like a fly yeah, on a, yeah, yeah, on a stray yeah, dog. Yeah, be on me. Yeah. Okay. But I'm gonna ask these questions. Do. And then if if it, if it ain't sounding right, then. Yep. Yep. Well, okay. I'm gonna call you. In, but if if you find out before I call you. You call me. Mm -hmm. You let me know what's up. All right. If I can't make it out here again, I can still take care of you over the phone. Okay. So we'll still be good. We'll get you squared away and make all sure right. you got the right I, stuff. I, I appreciate it. And hey, if it's all in the up and up, great job. Okay. Good for you. Okay. okay. So, all but right. we just want to know to make sure. Okay. All right, hon. And I thank y'all so much. Thank what, you. What time yeah, y'all eating the ribs? Probably this evening from about four. Four? Mm -hmm. See you at four fifteen. <laughs> okay, so we just watched a uh, a door knock that unfortunately didn't convert. Uh, what happened and why? Well, she recently got a policy over the phone through Fidelity Life, thirty thousand dollars for ninety five a month. She does not have the policy yet. Actually, said the company called her this morning, asking her questions about medications yeah, she's yeah. taking, which is another red flag. It I don't even think she was approved. I don't think she was either. I think she applied yeah. for thirty thousand for ninety five. Uh, tried to call the company with her. She didn't want to do that, and I understand why. To save face, she'd have been embarrassed. Plus, it seemed like there was like one hundred and fifty people inside the house. <laughs> yeah, there were. Caught her off guard. She's in her house coat. She didn't have ribs ready for us to eat, which is uh. a little disappointing. Um, but uh, planted um, a good garden full of seeds of doubt. Um, about the coverage she thought she was getting, explained to her the problem of term. And then uh, she said she was going to call the company and investigate, so I gave her a hit list of things to ask the company to identify what type of policy it was, um, verified her phone number, um, sent her my link, which I have set up actually to automatically download so she doesn't really have to do anything. Right. It's, it's in her contact right now. Right, right, right. So that way when I call her, my name will pop up. It won't come up as a spam call. Right. Um, basically, I just got to call her. I'll start calling her tomorrow, and I'm going to call her three times a day until I get her on the phone because that is a term policy. And So for the new people, John, what's wrong with term? 
Well, I shouldn't say everything. What's wrong with term when you're 66? Everything. Yeah. Because she had this policy, so she gets a 30 grand for 10 years. <clears throat> so she's 66. For the next 10 years, she'll be paying $95 a month. Watch her. I might need to get my Gatorade out. $95 a month <clears throat> uh, for the next 30 years, which equates to $11,400. That premium generates no cash value whatsoever. Always hydrate in the field. Right. And when the 30 years is up, coverage is gone, cash is gone, no cash value, all the premiums are gone. And then she has to start over. So now she's 76 or 77 years old at that point, and uh, she has no insurance. And nobody knows what's going to happen or change in health or life circumstances in the next decade. She might be uninsurable other than guaranteed issue by then. Whereas... Now she might have been able to get a thirty thousand dollar whole life for one hundred and fifty instead of a hundred, and it'd be good the rest of her life. Then she'd be paying one hundred and fifty, and maybe get seven, eight grand. Right. So um, it's a game of Russian roulette. You don't want to play. So with, for you new guys out there, term term terminates, right? And the purpose of whole life is to be the last life. your whole life, just like the description, right? Yeah. And uh, a lot of people. Why do buy? by term because they don't understand that the agents usually don't explain it. Uh, they uh, allure them with the cheaper prices for the higher level of coverage without yep. the knowledge of it terminating. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's why we are out here, you know, trying to get our clients the right deal, you know, because what if they outlive their coverage? Like John says, you know, you're in, you're in deep water. Right. Well, less than 1% of all term policies ever pay a benefit. Right. So there is a 99 point whatever percent chance that that will never pay a benefit to the family. Right, right. Now, you know, conversely, does that mean term is bad, period? No, it's not. It's, I mean, in my opinion, here's what it's designed for. You have a younger couple, 20s and 30s. They just got married. They have two kids, mortgage payment, car payment, whatever. The wife or the husband is staying home with the children, and the spouse is the breadwinner. It is to guard against a catastrophic, unexpected event. Let's say the breadwinner's on their way home from work, they're out of town on business, the plane crashes, you're in a car wreck, dies. Right. Then the surviving spouse is in home with two small children, a mortgage payment, and a car payment, and has no income. Right. What's that person going to do? The term policy is there to have an enormous amount of coverage for a very modest monthly premium to prevent against a catastrophic event. Right. That's really what it's for. Yeah, it serves I, that purpose great, but you have to go into it with the assumption, I will lose every single cent I'm right. putting into it, but you're not paying for the benefit. You're paying for peace of mind right. when you get that term policy. I have one of myself. Yeah, me too. I do. And You were talking about a client who's like 35 or 36. Yeah. I think Peter was calling. Yeah. Talking about. But I don't just have a term. I also have a whole life policy on myself, and that's the one that I'm going to keep forever. The right. term is substantial and it's there in case something happens to me, then my house is paid for, the cars are paid for, and my wife has money in the bank, so she has time to figure out what the hell she's going to do. Right. You know, that's what it's designed for. It is not designed to pay for final expenses or when people after they retire in their senior years or twilight years or whatever you want to list it. It's not and, designed and, for that. And the truth is, right about the age of 60 to 70, somewhere in that range, most people aren't going to qualify for term. And if they do, it's going to be complete garbage like the one that we saw. Like, right. well, I, I think it's a two or three year term that ends in 10 years. Yep. Uh, or the price is so exorbitantly high that the people we see who are on fixed incomes can't even afford it. Right. So, you know, it's just... It's, and the thing is, here's the sad thing. If they're on a fixed income, I think they're actually towing that Jeep. Um, if they're on a fixed income, that means money is tight to begin with. So when money's tight and every penny matters, an agent that's selling a client like that, a term policy that's going to cost $100 a month, that there's less than a 1% chance that it's going to pay out the family. I mean, that's just wrong. Yeah. That's the kind of thing karma is going to get back to you on, and it's coming back in spades, and you don't want to be involved anywhere near right, that. Right, right, that's right. Just, it's just not right. That's all. It's left. <laughs>
I'm getting back to you about the request you sent me online for the final expense coverage. You told me your favorite hobby was reading. You like to read? Yeah, look, my husband just passed away. I'm not. Okay, I'm sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. So some of you may be noticing that uh, we're not sitting in our underwear in our office. Well, calling. speak for yourself. Well, you don't know what's below this camera here, so, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we're out here in the field driving around, seeing people in the flesh. Uh, we call this the old-fashioned face-to-face strategy. Uh, and, John, can you address this? You've been doing this for a number of years this way. Uh -huh. um, what are the benefits? What are the drawbacks of doing face-to-face -face final expense sales? Uh, drawbacks are a lot of driving, a lot of fuel costs, a lot of wear and tear on the vehicle. Um, you could go drive around for 12 hours in a day, knock on doors and nobody home. My record, 32 doors. Oh, man. <laughs> One day, nobody home. <laughs> that was my record. Worst day ever in the field. Best day ever, you go out, you go to five houses and write eight policies. Right. You know, you never know. That's the only disadvantage is you could spend a lot of time driving around for nothing. But even that's not a disadvantage because you're out. You have scenery, you're seeing stuff, so that's all good. Right, Fuel expense, right, right. wear and tear on vehicle, all that kind of stuff. That's it. That's the only disadvantage. Well, there are some houses you go into that if you had your choice, um, you would not spend any time in. But if you spend time in that house and you walk out and your bank account gets inflated, you tend to overlook the inconvenience right. of that house. Right. The advantage is, though, that list is uh, very much different. Um, it is very easy for somebody to hang up on you over the phone. Most people do not um, or do not have the gumption to slam the door in your face when you're standing in front of them. Um, it gives the people the ability to see who you are and read you as well as you reading them. You know, when you talk to them over the phone, they don't know who you are. They don't know if you're in a call center in another country or wherever. But obviously, if you're standing on their front porch talking to them, they know that you're real, who you are, and you're there. So it is easier to build rapport face-to-face. -face. It's exponentially easier to build rapport. You can do it right off the bat. I try and start report before I even say my first word to the client with how I knock on the door. Um, and building rapport is a big thing. And then when you're talking to them, not only can they hear your tonality in your voice and the confidence in your voice, but they can see it in your mannerisms. They can see yeah. it in your face. They can look you in the eye and know that you're not feeding them a line of crap. You know, like the, the last stop we were at, if that agent was her face to face and trying to write her that policy, that lady would have smelled crap a hundred miles away, Yeah. but it was done over the phone. So now I have to try and track this thing down and try and correct the problem, which is what we do. Right. Um, it's, it's, you build a relationship when it's face to face, you talk to them, you see where they live, you see what's in the yard. Um, you see the area they live in, the scenery they live in. It gives you common ground to talk about, and there might be connections that you can make with with vehicles or decorations or fishing right. or hunting or, or artwork or hobbies or all this kind of stuff that comes up just from noticing it in the house, which is not an option when you're talking to them over the phone. Right. So, Do you have an opinion? on whether or not a new agent, agent should focus on one strategy face-to-face -face versus telesales? I'd say it depends on the person, I would say. I think per, I think it's always good to start face-to-face. -face. Um, that way you're used to the interaction with the client. You're used to the, you have to overcome the uncomfortableness of the first interaction with them. Right. Um, and that's most agents' scary thing is walking up and knocking on that door. That is their number one fear. Once you do it for a while, like now, I could care less. Right? I mean, I don't even think about it. I just go up and I knock on the door and I talk to them. Right. Um, but um, I, I would recommend starting in the field first. Um, that way you get used to talking to people. And I think just that level of comfort that you will build over time will come through when you're talking to people over the phone. Yeah. 
because uh, when you talk over the phone, if they hear vibration in your voice or they don't hear confidence, they're apprehensive to begin with. Right. But when you couple it with that sort of uncertainty, you're pretty much dead in the water. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I tend to think the same thing. I think more people would be successful. We support both of my agency, the big agency, but whether you're new or experienced, we want you to do what you feel is your strongest element. But reviewing agents over the past, I think more would be successful if they just got out in the field and talked to people because mm-hmm. the phone takes so much more skill set. You eliminate the body language. And, I, and I've been watching John today and like he's a master at it. Like he, he talks with his hands. He makes great eye contact. He makes feel pe- people feel good about talking to him. And you can do some of this over the phone, but it's just a lot harder when you lose the visual element, the body language. So you as a face-to-face person, uh, people are more forgiving, I think, yes. than when they are over the phone. So I tend to agree. Um, if you're stuck in the middle, like, should I do telesales? Should I do face-to-face? Start with face-to-face. You can always do telesales later yep. uh, to learn the business, the people, the process, and, and have a little bit more forgivingness from the prospects. Yep. But you can be successful either way. Right. It is proven either way you can be successful. For sure. For sure. But I believe to be successful... Uh, in telesales, you have to work in the field first. Yeah. My opinion. I'm looking for Peggy. That's me. Hey, I found you. Who are you? I'm John with the Addison Brooklyn Group. I'm getting back to you about the request that you sent to me for the final expense cut. You told me your favorite hobby was swimming. Yeah, I have a pool up there. Do yeah. you? I thought maybe you were doing one of those, you know, how they do the ballet in the water, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not you? No. No. Okay. Five minutes later. Yeah. I'll call you if I... My number's on mind. there, so feel free to give me a call anytime, okay? Okay, John. Thank uh, you so much. Yep, you got it. Go lay down. I am. Okay, so we just got done with um, an, a, a prospect with money. Is that how we described them? Yeah, they were um, affluent enough. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, they wasn't broke. Yeah, so, so one of the things in Final Expense that we like are people who are broke. Yes. Or people who don't have very little money yes. at all. Um, you know, so what John did well there at the door, I mean, he, he broke it down to the maximal extent possible. And uh, I think you could have gotten in had her neck not been, you know, she looked visibly. Oh, she was in pain. In pain. Yeah. She I had think, ice on it at the door. Yeah. I, I think you could have gotten in and yeah, maybe on a good day of, the, of her pain, you know, but, yeah. you know, point, point me saying this is that. And final expense, you know, like we want to talk to people that haven't set aside money, who don't have their pre needs set stuff set up, you know, that are that are they need to talk to us because nobody else will. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we're more on the hunt for. Anything you want to add to that, John? Uh, yeah, she had plans made at the funeral home. Funeral home knows what to do. She had separate savings accounts set up that um, each separate one had their kids' names on it. I mean, she was very well prepared. Set aside, make sure the kids' names are on the account so they have access to it. Um, and it's she's she's no dummy. Yeah. You know she planned stuff um, better than most. Right. So kudos to her for that. Um, I'm hoping I left her my car, hoping that something triggers in her mind, but she's not in searing pain because she looked like she was in a lot of trouble. She could barely move her neck, and she had her ice pack on it. Right. So I don't think that was an excuse. Is what it is you don't get them all that's so right we're just getting uh we got one and now we're just getting the bad ones out of the way so we can finish good yes sir so here's why i'm here i'm john this is david i went the addison <laughs> your mom sent info to me she's concerned about the funeral and final expenses i I'm sent in here from my mother there. yes Hi. Oh, oh, oh. I sent in the information on my mother. Yeah, Definitely I've been hearing wrong. about this um, thing in the state of Georgia, if you're a resident of the state of Georgia, yes. that they had this, um, well, that the state of Georgia helps with your insurance stuff or whatever. Okay. Life insurance. Okay. Do you know anything about this? Yes, they don't. So it's just a gimmick? Well, it's not a gimmick. Through the Social Security Administration, you get a death penalty. No one get a death penalty. Oh, that ain't for $300. 255 Well, it's not like that. It was... Because that we got it's it. Insignificant. We got it before Daddy passed. Yeah. Or Mama did. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so like, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I'll send it in, and I was the hoping I can get a pamphlet back or something because I don't want to see a whole bunch of damn people talking about insurance. I ain't got time for it. No, you just need me. Okay. Let's That's go. It. Yeah. <laughs>
my baby sister died four years ago from cancer, May 1st. Oh. Daddy died May 4th of this year. Which one do you want to do? Yeah. Oh, what, give me, what do you got? 5 Yeah, uh, yeah, I see that. I mean, um, two year waiting period. Yes, now here's the kicker, ready for this? You're gonna love this. This company, we call GTL, Guaranteed Trust Life, they're fucking awesome. If something happens in year two, they pay 50%. So double. Well, well, after year two. No, after year two. So if you get 10,000, I'll right. break it down. If you get 10,000 in coverage, the first year, they will pay the premiums plus 5%. What I paid in. Right, plus 5%. Yeah. If, if she would pass away in year two, they would pay five grand. They pay half. Oh, during year two. Yeah. After the twelve yeah. months. Uh huh. Oh my god. Okay. So right. All right. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do the uh. Which one? Boom, boom, boom. I know. It's, you want to do that? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. You can. Things to me. give you the account. Number. Yep. I need a routing and account <laughs> number from the checking account. All right, so we've wrapped up the day with Mr. John here. We had four door knocks, two closes, 100% conversion. The two, we tried to get in, but didn't get in. Mm -hmm. And then the last two, or the first one, the last one, yep. total of about 2,100 AP. Yep. So uh, solid day, and it's not even 5 o'clock. And uh, what's your thoughts, John? Yeah, um, good day. Um, the houses, we didn't hit that many houses because they were, our first house was an hour and 10 minutes away. Yeah. The second house was an hour drive. So they were spread out. We just got back to the area where uh, they were closely more assembled together, but right. we ran out of time because this last one took 18 times longer than it should have. <laughs> but, you know, you'll have that in the final expense world. You'll have that right. in bigger jobs. Right. So, but uh, it was good. I mean, I think closure i mean four houses we went to wrote the first one the second one the lady apparently her husband just died recently because she started oh, breaking right. down yeah. almost started crying at the door and just yeah. closed the door nothing you can do with that uh third one just got something over the phone uh, doesn't have the policy yet don't even know if it's approved that's something to follow up on there's probably a i don't know there's a chance that might be able to be converted right um, if they would have either had the policy in hand or I would have right. caught them earlier, that would have been written. But it's just in that limbo period where they think they have something great. So, yeah. Uh, and then the last house. It's the last house. And, you know, it was a process. It turns out the daughter sent the lead in for mom, right. um, looking to get mom extra coverage. Um, we had a stroke back in February. Um, heart attack or heart surgery, um, single bypass with two stints 15 years ago, but um, able to get her coverage, more coverage than she thought. She had a budget. She was hoping to get 5000 We were able to get her 10000 and yeah. keep her in her budget. So she's very happy with that. And the company we used, you know, GTL with the second year, they pay 50%. The client was super happy about yeah, that. You was. couldn't ask for a client that had a comprehension yeah. of how the policy worked better than her. Yep. She, she, I mean, she, we almost needed to hire her. Yeah, I know. She was like, I yeah. got it. Perfect. She's like, I got it. First year right is this on. plus this. Second year it's 5,000. Third year is 10,000 after that. The premium is this. Third of every month. Da, da, da. I mean, she was yeah. She was on it. She knew exactly what was going on. But it was a good day. We're heading back to the vehicles now. So uh, Big Hoss here can start his drive back to good there old go. Chattanooga. Six-hour drive. I can start my two-and-a-half-hour drive. Uh, back to good old Guyton. And uh, I'm thinking there's a burger in my future before that drive. Yeah, it's time to get some food. It's 4.30. I haven't eaten since 6 o'clock this morning. <laughs> yeah, I think you deserve it. And you see this. <laughs> that baby needs fed. It needs to be fed. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was a good day. John, thank you. Appreciate oh, you, man. Oh, yeah. Appreciate no it problem. very much. And uh, we'll be doing more of these ride-alongs because it's just a great opportunity to see what it's really like to be the business. Yep. And uh, comment below if you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions for John, John reads these videos. And make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you.